So welcome everyone. Um, in this meeting today, we're going to talk about a newer resource that we have with Light of the World, which is the flashcards. Um, and so flashcards can be a really fun resource. We can use them for games. Students can use them to review the vocabulary that they've already learned in class. And um, they're just a nice tool for, for repetition. And we have them in digital formats and paper formats. So I'll just be showing you how to access those and giving you ideas of some games and activities you can use with our flashcards. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And now, let's see. Um, so first of all, I'm going to show you, here we go, um, how to access our flashcards. So can everybody see my screen OK? Do you see the Google Drive? Yes. All right, great. <laughs> what we have here, this is the Google Drive um, for Light of the World materials. And you can get the um, link to this drive from our website, from the Literacy International website. And when you come to this Google Drive, you will see a couple of things. We have, um, this is an information sheet on how to use our materials. We also have the table of contents here, so you can see what is covered in each of our lessons. And then um, you have a choice between our low beginner and high beginner lesson. So I'm just gonna go into this low beginner folder. Um, and then you will see within this folder, there's all kinds of resources. We have the student printable um, PDFs if you want to print out the student lessons. We have flashcards, quizzes, the teachers printable books. Um, and then below here we have all of the slideshow presentations which you can view in PowerPoint or Google Slides. But if you go here to the flashcards folder and open that up, um, you'll see that we have flashcards um, and we have them grouped to go along with every um, seven lessons. And so they're, they're in order. So these are the flashcards for lessons one through seven. These are the flashcards for 43 through 49, et cetera. So I'm gonna just go to this one, which is our flashcards for um, A1 43 through 49. And it is in a PowerPoint presentation. And so if you want to use these with audio, you do need to download the file in PowerPoint. Um, if you're just going to print them on paper, it doesn't matter. You don't need to do that. But for the audio to function on the digital flashcards, you'll have to download it in PowerPoint. And the way you do that is just go to File, Download, and then um, click on Microsoft PowerPoint. If you don't have PowerPoint, you can get it for free. Um, so it is, it is available to everyone. And then once you're in um, PowerPoint, you'll, you'll go to the slideshow mode. You will see, oops, I'm not in PowerPoint, so that's why it's giving me that message. Um, you'll click to hear the audio. You'll click again to see the word. And let me just show you um, what these cards look like. So if we view this in slideshow view, um, at first you just see the pictures. Right, and so one way we can use this as a review with our students is just to show them this and ask them to tell us what is each picture. And so if they um, know the word, 
they can say it. For example, this first one is a backpack. And these are the same pictures that are used in the books. So they should be familiar with them because they've already gone over this vocabulary. What you can do then, um, once if you're in PowerPoint, is if you click the audio icon, will speak the word, and the narrator will say a backpack. And so this is something you could use for um, spelling tests. So you could have them see the picture um, and write the word. If they don't, if they're not sure what the word is, you can click again and it will say a backpack. And then if you click a third time, it shows you the word. And so they can see the word written out. And that'll be true for each one. So you can click it once um, and it'll say a chicken and then you'll see the word a chicken. So you have control over whether they just see the picture or they see the picture and hear the sound or they have this uh, picture, the sound and the word. And so I like to use those with my students either as a um, quick exercise where we just have them say the words to review them, or you can, again, use it as a writing exercise and have them write the words. They can also do this at home by themselves um, to practice. So that's one way you can use the, the digital flashcards and they can practice their pronunciation as well as um, knowing how to write the words. The other thing you can do is print these out and make paper flashcards, old fashioned paper flashcards, which are um, very fun and versatile. So to do that, um, you would just, depending on your, your program, usually you go to file and then print and then it's going to ask you like how you want to print it. And what you're going to do um, is print one slide per page landscape view. And let me go back just for a moment. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can see. Um, once you print these, they're going to look like like this. So it's, it'll just be a sheet of paper. Um, you can print them black and white. If you have a color printer, you can print them in color, which is nicer. The black, sometimes I'll print them in black and white and then let the students um, color them in to give them a little bit of color and interest. And then after you have um, printed them on paper, you can just cut them with scissors into little strips like this. And then take the little strips. Oops, I think that one's upside down. Take the little strips, fold them in half. And if you want, you can um, attach. So I folded it, taken a strip, I have folded it in half. You can just put a little piece of tape or glue or even a staple on top there. Um, the nice thing, if you're using regular paper and you, you do them this way, because it's um, two, <laughs> two sheets thick instead of just one, they can't see through to see the words. So um, that makes it a little bit um, more challenging for them to guess. Although seeing the word backwards through the paper <laughs> gives them a bit of a clue, but not too much. Uh, you can also, if you want, you could print these on cardstock. And if you prefer, instead of having them double-sided with the word on one side and the picture on the other side, you could cut them out individually and have the words and the pictures separate. And that's a good way to do it if you're playing a matching game like concentration, where they have to find the word, find the picture, and put them together. So um, very simple to use. We just wanted to have that, that resource available to um, make it easy for you guys to make 
your, your flashcards. Some teachers have been making their own by copying the images from the PowerPoints and, and putting them into um, a document. And you can do it that way as well. But this is a little bit of a time saver. Um, all right. So let me open it up, see if you guys have any questions so far before I go into showing you some examples of games. Anyone have a question? Okay, then I'm going to go over here. And I want to talk a little bit about how flashcards help us in our learning. So one of the nice things about flashcards is they contain a very small amount of information that helps us to focus. Um, sometimes it can be overwhelming for students trying to review material when they have an entire page of text or chapter of text in their textbook. And so a flashcard, because it can just be a couple of words or a picture, helps us to focus just on that little rectangle for the moment and um, to try to recall the vocabulary or the grammar or whatever we are reviewing with that flashcard. Flashcards are also great because they can provide immediate feedback. So if you're trying to remember a vocabulary word, you're not sure if you've got it right, you just have to flip it over to the other side or click on the digital flashcard and it will tell you the correct answer. Um, so instead of, you know, taking a test and handing it in and waiting a week for the teacher to return it to you, you get that instantaneous feedback, which is very gratifying to students. Flashcards encourage us to repeat the things we are learning in English, the target language. So it does take so much repetition. Um, you know, a student may need to, to see a word and hear a word 20 times or 40 times or even 100 times before they're retaining it. And so flashcards are a great way to get in a lot of that repetition. They can provide multi-sensory input so students can see images, um, they can hear the sound, they can see the written words. Um, there's the movement, just the tactile sensation if you're using the physical cards of taking a card and turning it over. Um, that helps a lot of students with their learning. And uh, flashcards are really flexible. So students can use them alone. One of the, the great things you can do with flashcards is just use them to study, have a, have a pile of cards and go through them, put the words that you know in one pile, the words you don't know in another pile and um, then keep going through those words you don't remember as well, getting additional practice on those. We can also use them in games and um, some. I'm gonna show you some of the games we we use today like charades and go fish and heads up. Um, we can use them in person in physical classrooms. And I know some of you have live classrooms where you get to be with your students in person. Um, others of us are teaching online like this webinar and we can still use these flashcards online. So they're very, uh, very uh, versatile. So one of the fun games we can do, I was actually just playing this game with my family the other night, um, is Heads Up. And so the, the game Heads Up is when you can hold a flash card to your forehead so that other people can see it but you cannot see it. So for example, um, if I hold this, uh, 
flash card up to my head. I can't see what it says, um, but the other, you guys can see the picture or see the word. And there's a couple ways we can play it. I can ask questions. Um, so sometimes we'll, we'll tell students, okay, you can ask five questions. So I can ask, am I a person? Or am I an animal? Or um, am I uh, an object? And then by the answers of the questions, I can try to guess what I am. Another way we can play it is, is with, with a team that's trying to help us by just shouting it out and saying, um, you know, you are an activity, you are a game, you are, et cetera. Trying to give clues without using the target word. You can use a timer to see how many words they can guess in a minute. You can also, um, sorry, I'm going to call. You can also um, have a, a game where you're acting out words or just giving definitions or um, they're not allowed to use their target language to translate. So there's, there's a number of different variations. You can make it more challenging for your students based on what they need. Now there's also, um, if your students have mobile phones, there's a mobile phone app that has this game on it, and, which is very popular. So they can use it on their phones or they can just use it with traditional um, flashcards. So have any of you, let me, oh, let me ask you guys, um, have any of you played any games with flashcards with your students? No, I hear crickets, literally. <laughs> we played a game that we, we didn't use that black cat TK. Okay, all right. And what yeah, game did you we play, were... Cyan? Yes, we play um, many games in the classroom, teacher. Actually, mm -hmm. we play like um, bingo, something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but we never used the flat cat before. But uh, I would like to try. Yeah. Yeah, bingo is another um, great game that we, we can play a lot in the ESL classroom. I, I love to use that to review vocabulary and grammar as well. There's nice. Also... Tanya. Oh, um, uh, <clears throat> I hate to say the word, but anyhow, uh, hangman, mm -hmm. where they have to ask for, you know, you put the, the number of lines up there and then they, they guess letters. And then once, if they guess the right letter, then they get to put it up, you know, on that and they try to guess the word. Yeah, that's also a fun one. And almost any game you play can be adapted for English class. So um, it's, we do include in each of the light of the world lessons, we have a song or a game, but you can always feel free to make up your own games that your students enjoy. Or I, we play a game called Apples to Apples. And uh, <clears throat> there's a, a kid's version of it that we use. But the students that I get to work with right now are at a little bit higher level of English conversationally. Because it, when they're really low, sometimes apples to apples is hard because you have to associate one word with another. But the mm -hmm. students I'm working with now really enjoy it. Oh, that's great. That's a great idea. Yeah, thank you for that one. All right, well, I'm going to go on, let's see, um, to our next slide here. 
Um, one of the things I do a lot, I've done this one a lot with my students is play go fish with flashcards. And so to do, to play go fish, it's a card game and we use it with um, two sets of flashcards so the, the players can make pairs. And the purpose of the game is to make pairs of the same vocabulary words. So if you have a, a, a turtle and a turtle, you try to get two turtles and the player with the most pairs wins. Um, so we deal out five cards to each player. The rest of the cards go face down in the middle of the table and we call that the pool or the fish pool. And then the first player can ask any other player for a card. And I will usually write out on the board the language I want them to use. Um, you know, so like, Susan, do you have a horse? So I'll put blank. Do you have a blank? And so that gives them a model for the language that we want to practice using. And we can change that language depending on what our grammar lesson is. Um, for example, you might have them say, may I please have a horse? Or um, could you please lend me a horse? So depending whatever the, the target vocabulary and grammar is, you can put that up on the board that you want them to use um, because they're gonna hear those phrases again and again throughout the game, they learn it very well. If the person has um, a horse card, they can say, yes, I have a horse, here you go, which is very useful vocabulary that we use when we're handing things over. Here you are, or here you go, um, and you hand over the card. If they don't have it, um, they can say, no, I'm sorry, I don't have a horse, go fish. And then the player has to take a card from the the pool of cards in the middle. Um, if they then get lucky and they do find a pair, they can put the pair of cards down on the table and they get to go again and ask someone else. Um, if they don't get a pair, then their turn is over and the person on their left goes next. So um, Go Fish is a great game to, to play, it reinforces the vocabulary, it reinforces those um, re polite requests and giving things to people and handing them to people. Um, and so that's a fun game that we can play. A lot of times I'll put a timer on it because it, um, you know, depending how much class time you have, you might just say, okay, we're gonna play Go Fish for 10 minutes. Whoever has the most pair in, the most pairs in 10 minutes wins because otherwise the game can go on for a long time if you have a lot of cards. Um, here's another game. Um, I have not actually done this one, but if you just look on the internet for games to play with flashcards, you'll find a gazillion. Um, but I thought this one would be fun. You give each student a few flashcards and then you play a song or a movie clip that uses those target words. Um, when the student hears his or her word, they have to stand up and hold their card above the head. So this makes them really listen to it. And especially in songs and movies, the language can go by pretty quickly. So they've really got to be paying attention, listening, and then getting them to actively stand up when they hear their word um, is a great way to have them identify that vocabulary. Um, another one you can do is Simon Says. So Simon Says is always fun. And what we do is we can tape flashcards around the room. So you can put them on the walls, on the floors, on the tables where they can see them. And then this is in a physical classroom. Um, you can say, Simon says, show me the fish. And then the students have to run over to the fish flashcard and point it out to you. The first one who touches it wins. Then to make it um, 
a little bit more challenging, you can have another student be Simon instead of the teacher. And that student will take uh, a turn at giving the instructions and say, you know, show me the sports, show me the apartment, show me the door. And people will go around the room pointing to those things. Um, so these games can be active if you want them to be. Um, you can combine them with other games like tic-tac-toe. If they get the vocabulary right, they get to put an X or an O on the board. And then the team that, that gets the three X's or three O's in a row will win. Um, but just use whatever games you like to use. Another one, um, same sound slap. So this is good to have students identify sounds. You can write a sound on the board. For example, um, if we have the letter F between these two slashes, that's the symbol we use for the F sound. And then um, students will put out their cards. And if their card has the F sound. They slap the table. They, um, they slap that card indicating that they think that card has the f sound. Now it may be spelled with a PH like the word phone or it could be spelled with the letter F like the word fish, but we want to emphasize that they're listening for the sound, not the spelling. Although of course you could do it also with the spelling. Um, so those are just a few of the games you can play. When we play these games online, you can use the um, chat feature in Zoom to send vocabulary words to different people. For example, if you're acting out charades, you can send out um, the words that they're going to be acting out to each person in the chat box so that others cannot necessarily see it. You can also, if your students cut out flashcards at home and they have their paper flashcards and you have your paper flashcards, you can use those as well. Um, you can use your whiteboard in Zoom. So there's a number of different ways to get creative with using these kind of, of resources.